World of Tanks. Eat your heart out you sack of shit. Can't even fucking count to fucking 19 rounds effectively. French tanks are totally- The AMX-50 Sir Bias is what happens when the French got fed up with all of this traditional heavy tank bullshit and decided to slap a copy of one of the most powerful tank guns in history onto a lightly armored chassis that can retreat forwards at a top speed of 51 km per hour. Combine this with a love of gourmet meals and a general aversion to heavy labor and you have the AMX-50 Sir Bias. The AMX-50 Sir Bias is the rank 5 battle rating 7.7 .7 pinnacle of the French heavy tank tech tree which is literally one massive disappointment after another for the French tank developers. Combine this with a small takeover by a hostile nation that shall not be named and you get a line consisting almost entirely of medium tanks pretending they can be heavies and heavies who think they can actually achieve something. The Sir Bias is the first heavy tank in this line actually worth a damn and you will have to grind your ass off to get your hands on it. However, this vehicle is not what it appears to be based on its stats. So without further ado let's get on with this before the French get wind of this video and surrender in the middle of it. Oh in addition before we move on I would like to give a big thanks to the Invincible Hetzer for helping with the script and Averick Von Nom for putting together the custom mission used in the intro on such short notice. If you haven't seen his content he has a great tutorial on how to watch Old War Thunder replays and you should definitely go subscribe to him. Link in the description below. Now with the shameless plugging- Get on with it! Yes! Get on with it! Get on with it! The mobility on the AMX-50 Sir Bias is actually not bad despite being heavier than a Frenchman after eating in Paris for a week. However the top speed on this vehicle is reserved only for arcade players since the French leadership decided to install an entire fucking wine cellar in the hull of the tank to slow down their retreat from frontline combat. But like I said, the mobility for a heavy tank of nearly 60 tons is not bad overall. On medium terrain the vehicle will do 38 km per hour in a straight line, if given enough of a run up. However, because of the power to weight ratio of only 14.7. The vehicle struggles to react quickly in terms of acceleration. Since the vehicle will always be retreating however the reverse only has one gear and is limited to 5 km per hour. This means that the vehicle has a hard time backing out of the Maginot line part to that it just constructed when it needs to and is honestly one of the most frustrating parts about French arrogance. Turret rotation speed like all French tanks is awesome at 25.5 degrees per second. Allowing it to out-traverse some SBAA vehicles of the same tier. This helps make up for the complete lack of a fucking stabilizer, and allows you to react much quicker to random armored attacks through heavily forested areas than most people would expect for a Frenchman. For all the weight of this tank you would expect there to be some semblance of armor. However the French have to be different to everybody else, and decided that their tank the size of the Eiffel fucking tower shouldn't have any. As a result literally everything at your tier is a threat to you and your fresh baguettes. Your upper and lower front plates are only 60mm which is barely enough to stop heavy machine gun rounds and light cannons at best. With your side armor being even worse at only- OH no! 30mm on both the side of the hull and the turret bustle. This means that literally anything can overmatch your side armor from a large distance. The front of the turret is not much better at 90mm with an effective thickness of 140 to 150mm. However due to War Thunder's broken as fuck bounce mechanics and super hard and French bureaucracy you can often bounce shots that should never bounce in the first place. Now onto the Gourmet 5 Star Food Dispenser. The SA-46 120mm cannon is a direct copy of the 120mm T-123 gun used on the M103 without a perfume extractor, so the crew can smell expensive as fuck. As good as the gun is however, it would make this tank mediocre, if not for the 19-shot auto-loading magazine contained in the rear turret bustle. This autoloader gives a Sir Bias an interclip reload of 7.5 seconds between super hard and baguettes. Combine this with over 300mm of penetration against flat armor at 100m and 240mm of effective armor penetration at a 30 degree angle with your stock armor piercing baguettes and you can punch right through the upper front plate of King Tigers at over 900m distance. 
Basically you are an M103 with an ace crew chief team reload speed. On top of this you have a stereoscopic range finder allowing you to range out to long distances and snipe enemy blitzkriegs before they even break through the Ardennes. However, the downside of having this much ammunition at once in one magazine means that taking a second magazine fills you up with more magnums of explosive champagne than that region produces in 10 goddamn years. As a result it is recommended that you only load a single clip of 19 rounds and that will have to suffice for the rest of the match. In addition to massively increasing the survivability of your gourmet delivery device, it also means that you don't have to worry about the 50 second clip reload which is long enough for the French to have surrendered a minimum of 3 times. You are also equipped with HE, but I highly recommend to never use it since switching ammo types takes so long that by the time you reload an HE clip the enemy will have grown old, started a family of 5 other children, died of natural causes, and those children have 5 more fucking children of their own. Gun depression is an acceptable 8 degrees allowing you to work some ridge lines and crest hills without having to completely expose your giant unarmored ass to the enemy. However because of the oscillating turret design there is a large overhang on the back of the turret that sticks out like the Cherbourg Peninsula that limits your gun elevation to only 14 degrees. This is quite frankly pathetic when compared to other tanks of that era. But hey, at least you can dab on those French haters. With regards to modifications the AMX-50 Serbias is pretty straightforward. Start with parts because screw logistics. Turret drive because generic SBA AMMs. FPE because this shit is lit fan. Adjustment of fire because 360 quickscope accuracy. Literally like the 50th Minister of Defense. Pocket sand. <laughs> Elevation mechanism and range finder. After this focus on mobility upgrades to not be slow as fuck. With regards to crew skills focus on tank driving, leadership, field repair, keen vision, vitality, targeting, and range finding. Your reload skill here is totally useless since the auto loader will continue to load the gun at the same speed, no matter what level your weapon reloading skill is, and how many crew members are left in the tank. With regards to how it's played this is not a heavy tank in the traditional sense. You are a medium to long range sniper and fire support vehicle, you are not supposed to lead the charge in an attack. You are there to support the advance of your team by telling them what to do, and occasionally delivering super hard and loaves of bread so you don't get reported for passive behavior. Be careful though, your armor will only save you from auto cannon fire and tank rounds will fuck you over with a single shot. So make sure you have solid cover between yourself and your enemy and always have a place to retreat to in case you have to repair or reposition. I will say it again you are not a fucking heavy tank. You are a massive fuck off sniper pussy with no armor, but can insult an enemy team into killing themselves very quickly. Now you know how to play the baguette bakery truck. Now get out there, and make your peasant teammates do the hard work for you.